Counseling and Psychological Services. Hello there. My name is Jeremy Vargas. I am a clinician at the Counseling and Psychological Services located at Buttonwood Bay Medical Center. Today I want to talk about myself and what to expect from me as a clinician. But before I go through that, I'd like to describe myself and give you sort of a portfolio of who I am. So with that, I want to talk about three of my favorite things to do. One is cooking. Now I know a lot of people say they like to cook. I like to cook too and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, my cooking is different in that I don't always follow the recipe. There are things that I've learned through experience and trial and error with cooking that I've done for myself and I've gotten to a point where, okay, I've tried this recipe but I've changed one or two ingredients or I've added another ingredient and it, it comes out well. So then I'll make that for my friends or I'll make that for my family. And that's how I've learned to enjoy cooking. Um, it's always, a uh, event with cooking. I got to make sure I put some music on. I got to make sure I have all my ingredients and I'm cleaning and cutting my onions and stuff. It's an event for me and I enjoy doing it. That's how I've learned to cook a many different things. Another thing that I enjoy doing is exercise. Now, I don't mean going and bulking up or trying to be the strongest guy in the room. I'm just going for fitness. So I go to enjoy the exercise. And throughout my clinical experience, I've figured out that exercising is a great way to reset my mind and put me in a position where I can better assess what's going on around me. So I make sure to exercise for myself. And that way it is helping me improve my heart, my lungs, my body, and it's also improving and strengthening my mind. The third thing that I enjoy doing is cycling. I have I had an old roommate who was a cyclist and he got me into it and ever since then I've been hooked. So I remember the first time I started riding the bike with him and I would go two miles on the bike and be winded and have to stop, had to drink like a Coke to stay energized and stay awake. I was on the verge of fainting after just two miles. I stuck with it. I maintained with it and I practiced it. And even now that I'm my old roommate, I don't live with him anymore. I still maintain the cycling tradition. I still go out to the point where I can actually do 45 miles now and not feel winded and be able to continue daily activities. And I find that as a success for me. I may not be able to do 100 miles or be able to compete competitively. That's okay. I've met my goal and I'm happy with where I'm at. So those are three things that I enjoy doing and that I feel define me as a person. Another thing I want to discuss with you all is where I stand with interventions used in the therapy room. I don't believe in instituting any type of therapy or intervention that isn't clinically based or hasn't had, doesn't have research behind it, or it's not something that I myself wouldn't do. So a lot of the research is important, yes. A lot of the referrals that doctors make are important, yes. But I feel like if it's an intervention that I can do, I will suggest it. That has led me to trying a lot of therapeutic interventions and it has been a very educational pathway for me because it's helped me to use those interventions not only in my personal life, my professional life, but also in my social life as well. So. A good example would be taking deep breaths. A deep breath exercise is used to help focus your mind and to bring you back to where you are. Usually when you're thinking about a lot of different issues that you might have around you, 
you're trying to focus on five or six different things, you can't really devote your time to any one of those things because you're divvying up all your resources among those things. And one of the interventions for something like that would be to do deep breathing. And it goes a little bit like this. So you'll just sit down, have a relaxed, relaxed body, close your eyes if you're comfortable, and you'll take four deep breaths in and out in through the nose, out through the mouth, and you'll feel your chest and your stomach rise as you take the in-breath. So, A task like that is extremely helpful for focusing your mind on what it is that you're going to do. A moment ago, I was a little bit anxious about doing this video right now, but after doing that deep breathing exercise and after practicing it for so long, it has helped me to focus and direct my attention to the things that I need to. This video, for example. Something as small and as easily accessible as deep breathing could be an expansive tool and very helpful for stressful situations or for moments when you are unsure what to do next. Interventions I use in the therapy room are interventions I myself may use or have used and I've seen success with them. Maya Angelou has a quote, and it goes like this. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. I am in full support of that because I believe that we all have our stories. We all have our challenges to overcome, and we've overcome many of them. And sometimes we don't tend to tell that to people. And that's okay. You may have your reasons why you're doing that, and I understand that. I feel, however, that a story helps to describe you, not only by three things you like, but it helps others to understand where you're coming from, why you see the world, the way you do. And I believe it's my goal to help you tell your story. I want to help you to tell your story, to figure out what is next in your story. Think about your life like a book. In each story, each experience is a chapter in that book. Sometimes a chapter may be closed and never revisited again. Other times it's a recurring theme that pops up in each chapter. I want to be the person to help you figure out where you are in your story, and where you want to be in the next chapter. Thank you for your time. And I hope that this video has been informational and helpful for you. If there are any questions or concerns, please reach out to Counseling and Psychological Services located at Buntwood Bay Medical Center. Thank you and have a great day. Counseling and Psychological Services is located at Buttonwood Bay Medical Center in Belize City. You can contact us at 636 08 Two, three, or send us an email at admin at counselingpsychbz.com.